Hi, my name is Brendan Bardick with Brendan Bardick Real Estate Coaching, where our mission is to train the most elite real estate agents and coaches on earth. Today, we're going to be talking about the difference between a commitment and a goal. Now, I, I get a lot of questions about this and I get, you know, it's one of the things for us as you know, real estate professionals that we always are talking about. You hear it all the time. What's your goals? What's your goals for this quarter? What's your goals for this week? What's your appointment goal in this goal, in that goal? Uh, so you hear that word a lot, goals, right? And I think what people don't realize is goals are great, right? There's nothing wrong with setting goals and, and we're definitely going to talk about the difference between the two. But at the end of the day, they're both important. A commitment is extremely important and a goal is extremely important. So I wrote down here on the whiteboard just a few kind of thoughts of the difference between the two, right? So if we look at it, number one, the goal is an outcome, right? So the goal is an outcome you're setting to achieve. So if my goal was to climb Mount Everest, then that would be the outcome. Right? So I'm, I'm going to say, hey, look, I'm going to make this happen. Uh, I'm going to set this big goal. And one day I'm going to climb Mount Everest. Right? So if you're looking at that and you're saying, okay, great. The first thing with a goal is we have to set a map to get there. Right? Well, first, we need to have a map. And then we have to set points to get to that goal. Right? So if we were looking at the, the Mount Everest situation, first of all, we'd have to do a number of different things to train up to getting to that point. We'd have to work on our cardio and we'd have to learn mountaineering skills and we'd have to do all of this stuff. Right? We, and then we'd have to you know, figure out which points we're going to go and the travel and the logistics and all of those things to make sure that I can actually hit that goal at some point. So the goal is where you want to go, right? That's the outcome you want to achieve. Now, if we look at a commitment, a commitment is your inner drive. Your commitment is what you're telling and promising yourself and committing to do on a daily, weekly, hourly basis to make sure that that goal happens. All right. So if, if I was looking at it and I said, you know, my goal is to win the 100 meter dash at the uh, Olympics. All right. That would be the goal. And I might think about that goal my entire life. Ever since I was a little kid, I go, my goal is to do this. My goal is to hit that one important mark, which is to get a gold medal at the Olympics in the 100 meter dash. Right. And so if I was looking at that, that's easy to say. All of us, I think, started out with great goals in mind. My goal, you know, my goal was to be a top producing agent. My goal was to be this. My goal was to do that. For some of us, the goal was just to become a real estate agent, right? You set the goal and you said, look, I'm going to become a real estate agent. Right now, I'm working at this job that I don't really like. My boss sucks and people yell at me and I'm tired of having to do this crap and all this stuff, right? So you're looking at that and you're saying, yeah, that's that my goal is to be a professional real estate agent, right? Now you set that goal. Now, a lot of people never make it to that point because the commitment level that they had to obtain that goal wasn't strong enough or the desire wasn't strong enough to do that. So both are important. In my personal opinion, I think commitments are a lot more important than a goal because if you're not committed, not 100% committed to obtaining that goal, you can set goals all day. I see people set goals every single time and, and don't come anywhere near them. Not even, I see people set goals and don't even try to get towards the goal. They just go, yeah, that sounds good. And my, somebody told me I should do that. And my managing broker told me that I need to have goals. You need to write down your goals. What's your goal? Could matter less if you don't have the commitment level to get there. All right. So one of the things I want to tell you are some things that I learned about how to make those commitments very valuable and to make sure that you're actually delivering on them uh, in, in every day, making sure that they're, they're not only obtainable, but that you believe in them. And I really think that's what it all comes down to, right? Right. You have to believe in it if you're going to commit it to your inner drive. Anytime I think of that word inner, I'm like, that's my heart. That's my soul. Like, what do I have to do to dig in and dive in? 
So here's a couple of, of tips and I think strategies that'll help you do that. You always have to start with the finish line first, right? So start with the finish line. If I look at it as a professional real estate agent, right? And I want to be one of the best in the industry, one of the very best in this entire business. I've got to start with knowing where I want to end up. And I see a lot of agents struggle with this because you're using, you're using goals that you're setting that aren't really dialed into a very specific point. Gold medal in the 100 meter dash is very, very specific, okay? You could even say gold medal in the 100 meter dash at the 2024 Olympics or whenever the Olympics are gonna be if they allow them ever again, right? Or whenever that might be. So that might be the thing. What I hear a lot of people say is, my goal is to be happy. My goal is to have success in real estate. My goal is to become a real estate agent, right? That'd be like me saying, my goal is to become a runner if my real goal was to win the Olympics in the 100 meter dash. So the first thing is we have to dial in exactly what we want out of this earth and what we want out of this, out of this you know, universe that we're asking for it. And we dial that in to, to make sure that we're going to accomplish it. So let's think about that. If you're a real estate agent, what would be that, that boom, what you want to be, that, that number one thing? Is it the number one individual agent in your office, right? That could be a goal. Now, story, when I started doing this, I looked at it and I said, okay, man, you know, this is hard. Man, this is hard starting out and everybody's beating me. I have to ask all these questions. I look stupid all the time. You know, th this, is, this is super harder than I thought it was going to be. All of those things went to my, through my mind, just like I'm sure it does with a lot of us because we're human. Of course, it's going to feel that way. So I said, all right, easy measuring stick for me was where do I currently rank uh, in stat wise in my office? Am I number 200? Am I number 50? Am I number five? Am I number... So I looked at that. And as a lot of us, especially when we start out, we were, we were dead last, right? You see your name at the very bottom of that list and it's like zero, 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 nothing pending, nothing active, nothing, nothing there. And I said, okay, all right. First thing is, is to get into the top 100 in my office. So I set that visual goal and I'd have the printouts and you'll see this in a different video, a picture of my office wall, still do it to this day, um, uh, with where all of the agents stacked in my office. And I said, okay, and I highlighted it. There, was, there I was at the very, very bottom, at the very bottom of that list. And I said, okay, every quarter, I'm gonna start moving up that list X amount of spots. And to do that, then I need to do X amount of sales. And of course, you've got to do this realistic. You can't be like, hey, in this first quarter, I'm going to be the number one agent. Of course, that's going to be challenging and difficult to do. So you want to make it obtainable. You want to make it realistic. And then you start setting a plan, a course of action to get you there. So this was very motivating to me. Then after quarter a quarter, and of course, there was some people in the office, and I'll be very honest, that I couldn't stand. Right, and I'm sure you probably have these people in your office. I was just like, God, oh, just for whatever reason, I can't stand that dude. Right, he's just ugh, or what have you. So I would always put a little star next to those people, right? And I'd say, man, and I'm competitive, and and, and I get this wrapped up a lot of times in people, and they talk about, it and they go, they go, well, I'm just, I don't care, Brendan, I don't care. I, I, everyone should get a ribbon, and everyone should do this, and everyone should do that. Yeah, that's not what I believe in, right? And that's not, not only say what I believe in, that's not what drove me, okay? I wanted to do, I go, look, if I'm gonna do this every day and I'm gonna work and I'm gonna show up and I'm gonna work hard, why, why not go all out? Why be average, right? Why just start with being like, cool, let's, let's uh, you know, see if I can end up as the number 14th agent in the office. That, that did nothing for me. Now, all these excuses are gonna go through your head. I'm a part-time agent, I'm a stay-at-home mom, I'm a stay-at-home dad. You don't understand, Brendan, you don't understand this, you don't understand that. My business is unique, it's not like yours. I've been doing this for almost 20 years and I've heard every excuse, every thought, all of this, but we know one thing for sure. If you sell more units than the next person, and as long as your rest of your, your budget model and economic model are okay, or not okay, good, then you're having a lot of success, okay? And 
it's fun, right? Winning is, is fun. Excelling and getting better every day is fun. What's not fun is just sitting around and being like, I'm going to just see where I end up. So, you know, if you are a pro athlete or a, um, uh, an artist, right? So a music artist, you're, you're, uh, you think when Drake was dropping, you know, albums, he was like, I want to be the number 10 album in the country. No, no. When he was looking at that, he was saying, I want to be the number one album ever. I want to be the number one this ever. And then he was in, in the studio and then he was late nights and, and hard work and all of this stuff. Okay which no one sees. They just see the glamour and the glory and all that. But I guarantee you, he set out to say, I'm going to be number one. So think about that. It's very important. Now, when we're looking at that, so that was one measuring stick for myself that I really thought was valuable is where are you versus your competition? Then after the office, the next goal was, okay, let's take that to the city. All right. So I was like, man, Number one in the office, that's awesome. Then number one in the city, then number one in the state. And now the next goal is to be number one in the nation, right? And looking at that, as I said, that might not be everybody, but now I have some measurements to, to proceed against or to proceed upon that are going to help me have success. And when I look at that, that also helps me in my business right? Does it help you in your business when you're at a listing appointment and you're like, you know what? I'm the number 16th agent in my office. I'm the number 942nd agent in the city. Um, not really that impressive. I also see this all the time. Number three agent at XYZ company, number two agent. That doesn't even make any sense. Leave that off until you are the number one agent. Cause everyone else is looking at it going, there's three people still better than you then. Why am I talking to you? Or there's two people still better than you. Why am I, why am I, why am I talking to you? There's no pride in third, second, or, or, or fourth. <laughs> there's pride in first, unless you're at an award ceremony. Because we are saying, hey, you did a good job. You worked your, your tail off. Congratulations. Excellent. But there's no glory in that to the public. You don't, you don't want to go to the number two car dealership in town. You don't want to go to the second best steakhouse in town, right? You don't see, you don't see these restaurants being like voted number, or number two restaurant in all of the city. Hmm. Well then Google real quick. Where's the number one restaurant, right? So don't get all hurt about this and say, well, Brendan, you don't understand. I'm number three and that's a big deal. I get it. Being number three is a big deal. I'm not saying that. Congratulations. That there's, that, that's awesome. I was number three at some point. I was number 10. I was number 200. All of that. But I'm saying is strive to be number one. There's no one out there. And then you go, well, I just, I hear this all the time too. I just don't want to work that hard. It's just, Brendan, it's, it's just too much work to, to do all of that. It's not too much work. The people at one, two, three, and four just have better systems, models, and tools than you. And they're leveraging those systems, models, and tools to have better success. So with commitments versus goals, you've got to commit to where you're going to be. And your goal has to be very clear to identify that. Now you might fall short of that goal and that's okay. That's totally okay. That's, that's not uh, the worst thing that's happened. Um, there was years, we were just laughing the other day. There was three years in a row, three years in a row where we came in number two. Our team came in the number two team, number two team, number two team. And I was like, ah! it started to drive me kind of nuts. And I said, okay, chill out. What's number one doing smarter, faster, better than me. And then what do I have to do to get there? Had to go and rewrite some plans, had to go and rethink some things, had to tweak some things. I'd already been building up to that and we were doing a, a, a great deal of business, but had to really tweak those things to say, how do I get there? And there's people out there that are doing that this year right now, trying to, to, to take me off the crown. And I love it. I love it. And, and I hope they win. Well, I don't, I don't hope they win. I'm kidding. I wish them you know, great success in, in, the, in the, the pursuit of that because I know what that feels like. I know how good that feels. So that's one way. So if I'm setting, again, the finish line, I've got to be crystal, crystal clear on what that finish line is. Otherwise, there's no point of going. Now, what could be another finish line for you, right? Your finish line could be a profit number. 
I want to profit, and this is a very good one, I want to profit X amount of dollars in the next 12 months, next six months, in the next quarter, all right? So how do you do that? And you have to start with being very crystal clear on what that profit goal is. Now, profit is great, and I love, love, love profit, and, and we focus on profit a ton, but it's not as exciting. Like, you can't be like in real estate, be like, yo, bro, what's your profit? You know, no one's going to care. No one's going to say anything. So the real thing is, is can you win and then still have strong profit and have the best of both worlds? Because I know plenty of people that will try to win and get to that finish line at all costs and they make 50 grand a year. That's just stupid, right? So I'm not saying to do it. We're going to talk about all the other principles on, on the organization model and, and, and how, or excuse me, operational model that we teach and all of that to make sure that that's locked in. But we got to make things fun. So you could have a profit goal. Now, the other thing that we talk about all the time is to keep your goals visual, right? So these two super bouncy ball buckets I'm going to be talking a lot about in our big uh, um, hour and a half goal setting session, which we're going to be hitting the reset button on 2020. So everybody can get ready to go for the next six months. But these uh, bouncy balls are one of the simplest and easiest tactics for you to set visual goals. So on the one side, right, to make this very simple when you're looking at the finish line, when you know that you start out with X amount of goals, so you take the two. So maybe your goal is 15 appointments a month, okay? You know when you do 15 appointments, you close six deals, and from that six deals, you make X amount in profit. Let's just say that those are your ratios. So if I know all I need to do is get 15 bouncy balls from this jar to this jar and visually doing that every single time I set an appointment and it goes in that jar, all I have to do is commit to making sure I empty this jar. Now, could I empty this jar in 15 days? Absolutely. Right? If I emptied this jar, and maybe yours are signed agreements. Let's say that yours is signed uh, agreements that you're doing. Now, I don't recommend to use this for closings unless you're a bigger team and you're doing you know, 30, 35, 40, 50, 60 plus transactions a month like a lot of us are. I would say, because otherwise, if you're doing two closings, moving one ball to the other with two closings a month, not really that exciting. Okay. Now, if you're just getting started, you could use this same kind of mythology for your contacts. So you could say every ball, if you know that you need to do 100 contacts a week, which should be the minimum if you're new, 100 conversations about buying or selling real estate, then you could have a jar with 10 balls per week and every ball represents 10 contacts because you should be doing at least, or excuse me, every ball should be 20 contacts because you're doing 20 a day, five days a week. And, and then you would have five uh, balls. So you would go five balls for the week Got to get those over to this jar and I have success if each ball was 20 contacts. So you can make the ball represent whatever the goal is, but I would strongly recommend making it represent an activity and not an end, um, not an outcome, right? So have it represent the activity because that'll help with your inner drive. So this is a great visual tool. I'm going to put those back there. So that's a great visual tool to help you dial all of this in. Now, some people use pins in a jar. They move 20 pins over to the next jar to have that come. So looking at it, but you've got to commit. Here's the thing about that word. Here's the thing why I love this word so much is a commitment is different. My goal could be to do 20 appointments, or excuse me, um, uh, let's just say easy number, five appointments in one week. One appointment a day keeps bankruptcy away is what I always say. But five appointments a week. Now, if I'm committed to those five appointments, I don't stop working until those five bouncy balls are into the other jar. Now, if I do that three days out of the five, I'm, ch I'm chilling the next two days. I'm probably busy because I got a lot of other work, but I'm chilling on the fact of making sure that I'm doing everything necessary to get appointments. So you have to commit, not 98%, not 99%, that 100%. So if I'm sitting there on Friday and that bucket still got one darn ball left in it and I haven't moved it over yet, guess who's working Friday and Saturday? Guess who's working late that night? 
Guess who's going to have to make more calls? Guess who's going to have to do another open house? That's because nothing is going to stop my commitment to achieving my goals. I'm going to be completely dedicated to it. Okay? So we teach a very powerful one page sheet that explains all of this, uh, which, which breaks this system down into two buckets and six commitments. It's a game changer, changed my life. I use it to coach a bunch of agents that have huge success with it. I know it'll change your life too. So check out our class. Um, uh, again, it's absolutely phenomenal on goal setting. Uh, you'll really enjoy it. And as always, I wish you great success.